Well, I had to make a little trip out to uh, our lovely friend Princess Auto to grab uh, another socket. I don't know why this doesn't autofocus very good, but there we go. Um, 30 mil socket for the axle nut. I thought I was good. I got my uh, three quarter inch breaker bar and well, five other sockets ranging from 32 to 38 mil. Uh, I've never needed a 30 mil before. And uh, so I grabbed the 32 mil, found out, hey, that doesn't work. Another half hour trip back out to Princess Auto. I know uh, Princess Auto isn't the greatest brand in the world, but uh, I've been using these axle nuts, or sorry, not the axle nuts, but those uh, these other guys here. I've been using these uh, uh, for probably almost 10 years. Like this one right here, you can see the ends beaten up a little bit like that. I've been, that one's a pretty common one that I've had to use. It's a 36 mil. Can't tell you what vehicles I've used it on, but uh, even the 32 mil has been used quite a bit. And I've been using it just on this breaker bar. Um, I never use it on an impact, so I'm not worried about impact breakage. Um, this 30 mil socket, from Princess Auto uh, was $12. Um, if you buy it uh, in impact, it's about $24. And uh, if you go somewhere like Canadian Tire, uh, the one just like this is about $24. Um, if you go to any other brand, it's gonna be more. Um, I honestly have not had any issues with these. I imagine if you took this socket and stuck it on a three quarter inch impact, um, you're probably gonna blow this thing to bits. It's not a high grade steel at all, um, but it fits perfect. It works on my nice breaker bar, slide or adjustable sliding breaker bar. I really like this one. And uh, it works great. Um, so, I don't know, there. Slides on, nice. I just gotta pop out this little tab, but uh, I've never had an issue. Just as long as you um, don't stick it on an impact wrench, you're fine. Anyway, back to uh, stripping this guy off. Those three uh, bolts, the 13 mil 12 point bolts, all three of them came out no problem. Um, I'd let the, um, the uh, what should I call it? This stuff. <laughs> the penetrating lubricant. I sprayed that last night, let it sit overnight. And uh, those bolts popped out no problem this morning. One note, if you're going to take your uh, wheel bearings off and take this axle nut off, um, and you're planning on completely re replacing that wheel nut, or uh, wheel bearing and all that, do it first. Leave the tire on, undo the uh, wheel nut, and then proceed to do the rest. Um, have it up uh, supported, uh, but still touching the floor. I've got my jack there just to support it, but it's on the floor. I've got a jack stand over here just in case. Um, but the wheel has to be on the floor. And uh, the reason is, is when you turn that uh, uh, nut, it turns the entire uh, uh, wheel bearing. So unless you want to uh, stick a bar between there, uh, between two of the uh, bolts and pin it to the floor or something like that, which you're gonna wreck the threads on those uh, bolts, which might not really matter because you're replacing the whole hub anyways. But uh, yeah, it's a good idea to do that first. And then you can just get in there and uh, tighten that on, pop that nut off and uh, then uh, lift it up, take the tire off, and set it up on some uh, jack stands. Just uh, an idea. So, the three bolts are out, the nut is off, and these are always a bugger to get off. Um, especially when it hasn't been changed in so long. There's so much buildup and corrosion on the inside. Generally, uh, you can get, uh, I've got a large uh, cold chisel. Um, it doesn't have the narrowest of points on it. Uh, it used to, but I've used it so much, it's pretty blunt. But normally you can put it right in. I like to go on just outside of where the uh, bolts are. Um, if I'm not reusing it, I'll actually go right at where the bolts are. Uh, the reason, if you are reusing this uh, hub, 
you don't want to do that is because you could damage the threads on the back or you could even break this little piece right off in which case go just below it um, wherever like right here it gets uh, there's from the hub to the uh, edge of the wall is the thinnest when it's at a farther distance there's a bigger chance that it's going to break off if you go down here where it's only about a quarter inch thickness of steel there's actually a little groove right here it's really hard to see right there there's a little groove that's a great spot to get in your wedge but the thing is if you're reusing it as well um, like you want to angle it up just a bit because if you go straight in you're gonna hit the inside of the uh, the steel of the hub and you might not be able to if you mar that you'll have to sand it or smooth it out or something afterwards so that it goes back in nice and smooth but for this one I was having a bit of an issue using my uh, big cold chisel and I was going through my toolbox and one thing I have is actually some hammer heads these are uh, Stanley hammers uh, they're good hammers uh, I go through a few of them maybe a couple of these a year uh, I don't really care because they're 20 or 30 bucks but uh, when I'm banging around on concrete and stuff because um, I don't just use them uh, for as a hammer like I should be uh, when I'm framing is um, I use the claws for uh, chipping concrete uh, bashing steel flat whatever and they break off in every which way this one broke off so I got just a bit of a handle left. I always keep the heads because I'm going to weld them into something funny but I've kept this one because there's more, enough that I can still use that. But what I did with this is the claw still has a little bit of sharpness to it and I don't feel bad if I grind it down even sharper but it lined up as a perfect wedge. Like you can see that there's still just a bit of a wedge left on that thing and it's pointier than my uh, thing. Took that and anybody that's in carpentry or the trades did exactly what you're not supposed to do with a hammerhead. I uh, went hammerhead to hammerhead. So I, I uh, wedged it in there. It gave me two uh, prying surfaces instead of one with the taper. And it just tapped it in and popped it right out. I had to go, I do all three points all the way around. So one here, one at the air bolt, one down here. And you just slowly work it out. Um, now I've already taken this out, so it should just pop now. And I sprayed this with lubricant as well, but you can see how much buildup and corrosion and gunk, and it can make it a really big pain in the ass to get this off. Um, afterwards, spray the inside um, and uh, clean that up, clean up any rust, um, take some sandpaper, smooth it all down. It should be smooth to the touch. Um, if it's not, make sure it is. Uh, any debris, get it all out of there. Blow it out <clears throat> and uh, get it all cleaned up. And that just makes it a lot easier for getting the next uh, wheel bearing in. I got one right here. And so now I've already cleaned it up a bit. Then it just slides right in like that. Just got to put the three bolts back in and suck it in nice and tight, and it's ready to go.
as you put these three bolts back in as you can see I hand tightened each one you want to go back and just evenly tighten them as you go around um, I'm gonna come back later I'm gonna work on the other side but I'll come back later and set everything to the proper torque um, before I get the brakes and everything put back on and uh, yeah it should be good um, I almost forgot this uh, dust cover for the brakes uh, Definitely want to get that back on, but now I got a nice smooth bearing again, which is great. So here's the uh, Gabriel shock uh, installed, all nice and tight at the top. The bushing, new rubber bushings in stock, and then like I said before, these original bolts broke off after uh, seeking some advice. I went with quarter inch. Um, grade 8 bolts with nut I decided to put a washer on each side just in case I ran out of blue Loctite and I used some red I'm hoping I don't regret that later <laughs> but anyway it should hold or it'll definitely hold it just means I might break the bolt next time um, but uh, anyway that's how that's getting mounted um, it went in pretty easy uh, as I'm installing it, I definitely realize this boot is toast, so I'm going to have to come back to that later. I need to get this van up and running so I can just use it for some commuting, but uh, that should be okay for a little while. Uh, I'll have to pop this uh, axle back out later, but uh, it is what it is. I hate doing things twice, but uh, when I do that, I'll probably end up replacing even tie rod ends and... Uh, some of these other bushings and stuff as well so uh, everything's pretty worn um, like I said before you're just replacing these grease nipples so that I can get grease in there properly um, just all kinds of maintenance there's tons of stuff to be done on here fortunately it's not hard stuff to do on your own but that's how those are going in uh, uh, it, it'll be nice to uh, definitely better the ride that I had um, just driving around town or even on the highway.